Welcome to the Hope Talks podcast with Grayson Willis and Pastor Margaret Michael, where you'll hear inspiring stories that are filled with hope and good news in Jesus Christ. You can also search for our podcast on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Podcast, and tune in. Welcome to today's broadcast of Hope Talks. I'm Grayson Willis. And I'm Pastor Margaret Michael. Thanks for tuning in today. And today we're joined by Susan Knoll from AvaCare. Susan, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. It's so good to have you here today, Susan. And we didn't tell you this, but we like to ask just a fun opener question. And our topic usually is on ice cream. So do you have a favorite ice cream? I actually do have a new favorite ice cream. It's a Turkey Hill flavor and it's really good. Double Dunker, that's what it's called. Double Dunker. So what does it have in it? It's a coffee flavored ice cream with Oreo pieces and not sure, maybe some caramel. I'm not sure, but it's really good. Wow. And sometimes they have it at Sharp Shopper, so... You had her at coffee. <laughs> I know, I was going to say, you had me at coffee. Yeah, it's really good. Uh-huh, you didn't have Grayson at all. Um, he's that vanilla guy, and we can't get him away from it. But I have a new favorite about every time we record, because I just love different types of ice cream, but I love stuff that has a crunch in it. Yeah, well, then you definitely need to check so this I'm out. So I'm going to have to turkey sharp Hill. chopper. Yes, turkey heel. Awesome. Well, Susan, if you just want to start out telling us a little bit about where you're from <clears throat> and about how you grew up and... How you got involved. I mentioned that you're with Ava Care and uh, the executive director there. Sure, yeah. So I grew up in Woodstock in Shenandoah County. I came to James Madison University and when I graduated, I stayed in Harrisonburg. I actually uh, used to come to Harrisonburg First Church mm-hmm. of the Nazarene. That's mm-hmm. where I met my husband. And we have an almost 13 year old son and two golden doodles. And um, my degree is in business and human resources. So um, I had a couple jobs, a job in corporate HR and then a nonprofit job before coming to AvaCare 14 years ago. Very good. So I will just back up to your childhood. It always interests me. Like, did you grow up in church? Was that a part of your life? Did you grow up in a Christian home? Like, what was that like for you? Yeah, I did grow up in the church. I went to a small brother in church. It's where my parents still attend. Nice. Um, so church has always been a part of my life. Um, and then when I went to JMU, I got really involved in Campus Crusade for Christ, or crew as they call it now. And that really is where I think I really learned more about what it meant to have a personal relationship with Jesus. It really solidified some things for me. I had a lot of community and discipleship and um, Bible studies and did some summer mission trips and things like that. So yeah, church has always been a part of my life and um, it's just really exciting to now be working in a place that utilizes um, the skills that I have, but in a ministry setting. And we probably shouldn't take it for granted. Most people know what AvaCare is, but I don't want to assume that everybody knows what AvaCare is. So if you want to tell us about the ministry that AvaCare does. Sure, yeah. So AvaCare used to be the Harrisonburg Pregnancy Center. Many people that are from this community might originally know it as that. It was started in 1984. In 2014, we rebranded the organization to AvaCare of Harrisonburg. And Ava stands for Advocate Validate Answers. We advocate for her, validate her concerns, and provide answers to her questions. We are a Christian, life-affirming, nonprofit medical clinic, and we provide relevant testing services, education, and hope to those that are at risk of or facing unintended and undesired pregnancies in our community. Oh, such a need. Um, Absolutely. And I'm sure I have no idea how big the need is, but you do. Um, how did you get connected with that? Was there it was just the job that came open or you know, that's a very specific focus and calling, I would think, to minister to that demographic of ladies. Yeah, it's an interesting story, but I was working at the free clinic uh, when it was open downtown, and I started as a volunteer, as a client advocate, caring for women who were facing unintended pregnancy. And then I transitioned to the board of directors, and I served on the board for three years. And while I was on the board, the position for the executive director came open. And to be honest, I was not interested in the job, um, but I did volunteer to help find the new director because of my HR background. And uh, I was challenged by the board. Um, I was 
asked if I would consider applying and I graciously said, uh, no, thank you, but I'll help you find someone. And then I was challenged again and asked if I would pray about it. And um, I went home and I asked my husband, how do I pray for something that I don't really want? But I said, I would pray. So he just said, just pray and ask the Lord if this is where he wants you to change your heart. And he did that. And that was 14 years ago. So yeah, next month I'll finish my 14th year as the director. So after, you know, many years I have come to um, truly believe in my heart that I was called for such a time as this and really created to do this. It is uh, definitely my passion and uh, I believe it is incredibly important work to the heart of God. What would you say just in thinking about the pushback that you gave um, when you were given the opportunity. I'm sure there are folks that are listening that people have said, hey, I think you would be great at, and they don't see it for themselves, but they have people that are mentoring, looking into their life, and they see potential. Um, What would you say just to encourage people not to be held back in fear? What was it like for you to go through that process from, I don't want to do this, to the Lord giving you a desire, to that becoming reality. Like, what was that? Like, I'm sure not every day was rosy, Mm -hmm. and probably not every day is rosy now always, right? Mm -hmm. But when you know that you know you're called, and was there like surrender? What did that look like for you? Yeah, that's a good question. I think it was just, it was definitely a step of obedience. I'm not even sure that in the beginning it was necessarily something I really wanted to do as much as I uh, knew that the Lord was calling me to. And so there's definitely surrender that's involved. But I think when you are walking with the Lord and he calls you to something, you know that, first of all, obedience is what we're called to as well. But um, he doesn't call us into things that he doesn't equip us for. And so what I would say to those people is that, you know, we can't judge something by what we think we're qualified for. You know, I'm always um, encouraged by the little quote that God um, equips the called, doesn't necessarily call the equipped. And he has been so very faithful in equipping me and putting people in my life to encourage me and mentor me and walk alongside. And for many years, there's been absolutely no doubt in my mind that this was the purpose that he had for my life. Yeah, I can see that. Um, I know that the program has grown and you've had great vision for the program. So like I remember you from, you know, yeah, how many years ago? Yeah. And just to see how God does that for us. You know, it's called faith, right? Like mm-hmm. you had to take that step. Psalm 139, 5 says that he goes before us. Every step we take, he goes before us. And Yeah. And one of the things that I think is so um, beautiful about ministry, I mean, I know it's true at Avacare. I'm sure it's true other places, but when we walk into something that we believe the Lord is calling us to, we think we're going there to serve and to help other people. And what I have seen time and time again, not only in my own life, but in all of my team over all of these years is that he doesn't just desire for us to care for other people, but he desires to care for us. And so he has just met me in that job so many times. He's done such significant healing in my heart. He has cared for me in ways and demonstrated faithfulness and grown my faithfulness or my trust in his faithfulness in so many ways in order to equip me to be better at my job. And so um, when I hire new people, I always tell them, you're coming here, you think, to serve and to care for other people, which is true, but just be prepared because God has really great things in store that he wants to do for you. And so AvaCare really is such a sanctuary for healing and hope, not just for the women and men that walk through our doors, but for the people that serve there. His presence is always there. He desires healing and growth and hope and all of those things for all of us doing the work as much as he does for those that we serve. And um, that just continues to just really impact my heart. I see that. Like we have Celebrate Recovery here, which is a 12-step program. And, you know, we thought we were starting too, you know, to help other people. And, you know, God has really helped us as leaders um, in that process. And I think that's a part of ministry is that we don't arrive and do something. God is continually um, renewing us and in his image, right? Mm -hmm. So it's sometimes it's maybe something that's really hard to walk through where he teaches us something about ourselves and about him. So I think that's really cool just for you to be able uh, to see that and to prepare your people Mm -hmm. because you are walking in very vulnerable places. It's holy ground. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. 
And uh, it was a great season. As you were talking, I could just hear, like, if you surrender to God and what he has for you and be willing to be used to help others and to serve others, then not only does that person get the blessing, but you get blessed also Mm -hmm. by helping people. And like you said, he helped equip you and train you. And he doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the called and equips the called. And so uh, that's a great testimony of that. What else would you like to share about Ava Care and the ministry that y'all do? And maybe even without giving names, but just generic stories of how God is using Ava Care in this community. Yeah, I love the work that Ava Care does. Um, we truly are a place that speaks hope and truth and life into other people. Um, we are dealing with people at a very vulnerable time in life. Um, many times, uh, even what would be classified as a crisis, um, women that are experiencing really undesired pregnancies. So um, we oftentimes think of pregnancy as a very happy occasion, and for many it is. But for our clients, it is devastating. It's overwhelming. It's scary. It is undesired. And so they come into Ava Care uh, many times believing that abortion is the best or only option to their situation. And... Um, you know, at Ava Care, we do not believe that that would be God's uh, plan for them. We do believe that He is the author and creator of all life. And so our desire is to really just help care for women in a holistic manner, physically, emotionally, and spiritually in the midst of their crisis and to be able to help them see past the circumstances of today, um, beyond that into the future and to see the possibilities to um, see their own strength and their own capabilities. Ultimately, our desire is to empower them to make a well-informed decision. And our desire would be that that would be a decision for life, of course. That doesn't always happen. Um, And even when it doesn't, our desire is still to care for those women and to continue to be a source of hope and life for them. And so, you know, there's nothing better than seeing a woman who comes in devastated by the news of a pregnancy and feeling like abortion is her best option. Maybe even she has an abortion scheduled and she comes to Ava Care and um, is the recipient of our services, um, gets to meet with a client advocate, a nurse, gets information on our options, gets her heart cared for, Um, gets an ultrasound and gets a lot of questions answered. And through the information and the caring and the prayers, um, she is empowered to make a different decision. She's able to see beyond uh, the circumstances and really recognize her own capability um, and to really tap into what she knows to be right and true. And to see her make a decision for life, a decision that she can be proud of, um, is really very rewarding. And so our prayer every morning before we see clients, um, we pray for them and we pray that um, the presence of the Lord that we know is in our facility um, would impact them, that they would leave differently than they came, um, that they would uh, receive a hope that they didn't have when they came in. And, you know, you can see that on a person's face. You can hear that in their voice when they've been the recipient of hope. Um, So that's one of the primary service that we provide is the services for women facing unintended pregnancy. The new thing that AvaCare has expanded into in the last um, 18 months or so is STI testing and treatment. And that really is um, a strategic and preventative sort of program. Um, We are reaching the same demographic of women, those that are engaging in risky sexual behavior. And we are able to meet them at a different point of need um, where they um, think that they might have an STI or need to be tested for an STI. And so we're able to provide those services for them. And when they come in, they also get cared for holistically through not only the doctor and the nurse, but also a sexual health advocate who is there to talk with them about healthy relationships and the decisions that they're making and and um, really just to challenge them on um, their sexual decision making and how that's leaving them feeling and why they're making those decisions. And that oftentimes um, just opens up doors for conversations about faith, about value, about purpose, about um, self-esteem, all of those sorts of things that 
young people in our culture today are really struggling with. And so uh, it's a dark area. Um, there's a lot of really um, shocking stuff happening in um, the sexual culture right now. And so we are venturing into that and we are bringing a different message and we are bringing light into that darkness and speaking hope and truth and life into those women as well. And we are um, just so, just so encouraged by the responses that women are leaving us on their exit evaluations, the revelations that they're having about themselves, about their purpose and their value and um, the things that they're going to reconsider. And so we are super excited about that. We also, you know, talk with them about what would happen if you found yourself in an unintended pregnancy. And many of them say abortion and they're, you know, they're not thinking about that, but that would be their solution if they were to find themselves in that situation. And so we're able to remind them about our other services and um, just to be there, having already built relationship and trust with them, um, provided a safe space for them so that if they encounter that situation, they remember AvaCare and they come back to us. So uh, we expanded our medical services right in the middle of COVID. Um, we took a huge step of faith and the community has been so supportive and so generous. And um, we are definitely meeting a very critical need through that program as well. That is powerful. Um, just to have that open door to build relationship kind of show up in their life before they find themselves um, in that place and maybe they won't find themselves in that place because um, you all had that preventative conversation yes that is that, our hope yeah that's powerful and susan as you were talking about you know ministering to girls regardless of what decision obviously you hope they choose life but if they don't choose that then ministering to them I think one of my earliest memories of uh, when it was still the pregnancy center before AvaCare, a lady came and spoke at our church about the pregnancy center at the time, and she shared about having an abortion and the pain that caused her, but how she was now able to minister to girls and give advice to girls in a similar situation to hopefully not make the same mistake that she made. And just so how God can uh, redeem mm -hmm. even a broken situation or a sad situation, use it. Absolutely, yes. Yeah, and I think that's no matter what we've been through, if we will give those hurts, be it abortion, one listening may have had an abortion mm -hmm. and they feel shame. God is forgiving and full of grace. And uh, we've had a few people in Celebrate Recovery um, share in their testimonies, you know, what that was like in their life. And mm -hmm. it was the hardest thing for them, you know, to get up and, and share, no matter what it is, no matter what pain, no matter what we've done. Like, we want to put that, um, and, you know, no one wants anyone um, to have to go through that. But I believe that God can redeem anyone that's listening. Like, don't live in that shame. Um, I would even say that if that's been a reality of someone listening, they could come to Ava Care and get some really good, you know, like counseling. It, yeah, I don't know what you would say as far as if someone is listening and they've been there and it's been years. Like, what would you say to a person? Yeah, well, I'm glad you mentioned that because um, one of our other programs that we offer is a program called Three, and that is our after abortion care program. And that is designed for women who have experienced an abortion in their past. And it is a program that is designed to walk a woman through the healing process of an abortion. And oftentimes the women that go through that program are usually women in the church and women who maybe 10, 15, 20 years ago experienced an abortion and have have lived with the guilt and the shame and some of the possibly depression. There's a lot of things that can impact a woman from an abortion. And sometimes it's not until later in life when kind of that all comes together and they realize these things are all connected. And so this program is really about finding freedom from all of that and allowing the Lord to redeem and allowing him to forgive and um, and it is led by others who have experienced an abortion in their past. And so they understand that it's a very, uh, it's a confidential um, setting, um, but just a really safe space for a woman to just talk about that. And um, we hear great testimonies from women who go through that program and are able to 
just walk in a newfound freedom. And so, yeah, I would encourage any woman who's listening who has experience in abortion to consider the three program. You can contact AvaCare confidentially um, to speak to our three program coordinator or to just ask questions. All of the services that I mentioned before and the three program are all at no cost to the client. um, And that's because of the generous support of this community. So yeah, that is definitely a program that's there just for women who specifically have walked through that in their past and uh, they'll be met with people that really understand and can love them and help them find freedom that God so desires. And freedom that maybe they never dreamed would be possible. Yes. And I'm just going to guess that some of those ladies end up volunteering in the program. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, like you find a, like God turns that mess into a message, right? Like he can use the brokenness that we've had to bring hope to other people. So yeah, it's really cool just to hear all the aspects, you know, it's pre-pregnancy, it's finding yourself in that place of um, unwanted pregnancy, but it's the post too. So it is, you have a a full scope. Mm -hmm. It's powerful. Yeah, and I would also say a lot of times women who have experienced an abortion really convince themselves, or maybe it's the enemy that convinces them that they're the only one, um, that nobody else has gone through what they've gone through. And, uh, you know, the current statistic is that three out of 10 women will experience an abortion by the age of 45. And so that's 30% of women. Mm -hmm. And so I would also just remind those women that are listening that have experienced an abortion that they are not alone, that they are not the only one. this is often a secret that's held very, very closely, and and that is just something that I believe the Lord desires to bring into the light and bring healing to as well. Yeah, I, I do. I believe that. And I was thinking as you were talking about those that are presently dealing uh, with an undesired pregnancy, they have, like, it's not something you can go around and tell your friends, hey, this is what I'm struggling with, you know, or even, like, just thinking about having that safe place to process all the thoughts that are going through your head, you know, like... How many thoughts would be going through a woman's head of where do I go from here? And if this person, you know, and just having that safe place. Yeah, I, that's my favorite word when someone describes Ava Care as safe. I think that's the highest compliment um, because we often are the first person that knows or mm-hmm. maybe the second after a best friend. Um, yeah, because once you tell people, then um, then everybody has an opinion, right, yeah. about what you should do. And nobody wants to open that bag up until they know for sure. And so, you know, we do have the privilege of meeting a woman at that very um, special place of um, being entrusted with that information and being the one that can give her the answers that she needs and can even, you know, talk with her about how to tell those other people. You know, if we are serving uh, younger girls, we, you know, we talk with them about uh, the importance of talking to their parents and how to have those conversations. And we follow up and, you know, make sure that they're having those conversations and see how those win and, or how to tell their partner or um, whatever it might be. But um, yeah, we are oftentimes the first place they come, um, and we recognize what a privilege that is. And I think we do a really good job of creating uh, our facility is beautiful. If you've never been and you're interested in seeing it, I I always love giving people tours. Um, It's a very beautiful space. Uh, Like I said, the Lord's presence is definitely there. And, And oftentimes when we share Uh, testimonies at our banquet of women who have Mm -hmm. come in almost every time they comment on how, um, not just how beautiful it is, but how the beauty of the space makes them feel valued and worthy. And I think sometimes we underestimate how desperately people need to be seen and felt worthy um, and cared for. And so just to think that through the beauty of our space and all the intentionality that we put into that. And, you know, everything we do is with intentionality Mm -hmm. that just sitting down in a space that doesn't feel like a doctor's office and doesn't feel like a a social services agency or anything like that. Just the beauty of that makes them feel loved Mm -hmm. and cared for and special. And I just love that. I just, it, it really is so easy. It can be so easy to care for people and show them love. And in such a time as this, we need that everywhere, right? Right. And Susan, if you'd like to share uh, AvaCare's website, best contact, 
And also you mentioned something about a banquet. So if you'd like to share information about that also. Yeah. So um, we have two websites. One is designed more for our clients, um, but our website where people can learn more about how to be a part of the organization, how to support it, our history, um, events, things like that, that would be support.avacare4u.org. And that would be all spelled out, avacare and then foryou.org. And they can also find information about our three program there as well. Um, we do a couple fundraisers every year and our annual fundraising banquet is usually in September. So we do advertise that on our website as well. Um, so yeah, we hope that you'll reach out. I just wanted to make sure in case somebody was listening that needed any of Ava Care services or knew of somebody that needed Ava Care services, they knew how to get in contact with you all. Is there anything that we haven't asked you that you would like to share about Avacare? Yeah, I always um, take the opportunity to ask for prayer for our ministry. Um, we are dealing with some pretty tough situations, and um, you know we know that this work is really important to the Lord, and we also know that the enemy um, would desire nothing more than to destroy the work that we're doing. And so um, I think it's really important that listeners know how much we desire and would ask for your prayer, uh, not only for our clients, but just protection over our ministry, over our facility, pray for our team members, pray for um, just our families, our marriages, our health, um, so that we are able to continue to do the work um, that we're called to do. And we greatly appreciate that. Well, thank you so much um, for sharing with us today, Susan. And I've learned a few things. So thank you, and I thank know you. that it's been a blessing to those and um, hope to those that have listened. But I want to just close out today by praying for the ministry. Thank you. Uh, Father, we come before you today so grateful, God, that you are the great healer and the great restorer. God, I'm so grateful for your people who are called to be reconcilers. Um, Father, this ministry finds women at such a place of um, crisis and I thank you that um, you have equipped this team. Um, you've given them a leader in Susan, and you have equipped a team to meet women um, at a very crucial point of need um, in three different areas, um, all three which are very needed. And, and Father, I thank you that you've given them wisdom. Um, God, I just believe that your favor has been upon um, this ministry, and I believe, God, that your blessing has been undeniable. And so, Lord, I pray that that scripture, uh, that you will continue to take every step uh, before them. Um, you are true to your word. You can't go against it. And so I pray for that, but I want to thank you, Lord, because you do. Um, you have and you will continue to take those steps in front uh, of this team, and you also hem them in and protect them. Um, and I pray that protection over them, that the enemy would not be able to shoot his fiery darts, but that your grace would burn them away uh, before the things of the enemy would even come close. And Father, you also say in Psalm 139, 5, that you will impart blessing. Um, and I believe that today. Um, this is a beautiful picture of your people about your business, um, doing the work of reconciliation and um, bringing uh, your presence. We are carriers of the Holy Spirit. And just to hear Susan talking about how the Holy Spirit is so evident, and that's because the workers are filled. Um, it's beautiful. And that makes a room different. It makes a life different when they actually are interacting in the Holy Spirit presence of the Lord it's holy ground. So I just, I thank you for this team. God, I pray your richest will on this team, over their families, over each person that walks in. God, I pray that their ears will be open to hear that there's hope and that hope has a name and that name is Jesus. And so Lord, thank you uh, for faith-based nonprofits um, such as AvaCare in this community, bringing hope to seemingly hopeless places. God, we just give you glory and we give you praise and we give you honor today for what you're doing um, through those uh, vessels 
that um, work and volunteer at AvaCare. And we just place the ministry, um, the people in your hands, and we trust you with the details because you are so trustworthy. And I pray it in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Susan, thank you for joining us for today's broadcast of Hope Talks. It's been great to have you. Thank you. It's been my pleasure. I pray that as you've heard Susan Knoll, the director of AvaCare, talk today about AvaCare and their ministry, that it has been a half hour of hope for your life. May God bless. Hope Talks is sponsored by Church of the Nazarene Harrisonburg in partnership with Sunshine Ministries. Thanks for listening to today's podcast of Hope Talks. If you enjoyed the podcast, please subscribe for updates and the latest episodes. Also, if you're in the Harrisonburg, Rockingham County area, we invite you to listen on the radio each Sunday at noon on 1470 AM or 102.1 FM WBTX.